much. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, attack helicopters, Lego trains, however you uh, you might uh, identify. Thank you for joining me once again. We're, we're taking care of the task of dealing with people who want to be wrong on the interwebs. It's a recidivist offender. It's Milton. Uh, 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 Mills, who uh, wants to uh, uh, take uh, uh, an hour and uh, 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 20 something minutes to say something he probably could have said in about 20 if he wasn't spending so much time saying, uh, 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 perhaps. Uh, so, what I'll do is I'll just sit through this and respond to it point wise and to point out where he's wrong and spoiler boys and girls it's fucking everywhere as usual um so what i'll do is i'll sit through this and i'll provide for you a long form response video which will be very long and i'll probably also break it down into segments shorter videos where we can deal with topics in a more um, brief fashion and I'll probably publish those as well right let's crack on and let's put Milty to right where he's wrong and as I said before that's fucking everywhere off you go Milty oh, well good morning everybody um, I just want to say that um, I am really really one um, honored and privileged uh, to be here and I, I did not realize until I got here and actually saw the program what an incredible conference this is. Um, this is just, this is really, truly one of the most amazing lineups uh, and programs uh, I, I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, so that's the first mistake there, Milty. Though this is not an incredible program of value to people. What this is is, is, is an unbelievably disingenuous, inaccurate uh, propaganda program that people are paying good money to be lied to by crackpots like you, Milton, to, to say ridiculous, unsubstantiated garbage to them and suck it up because they love it. Um, what you have here is incredible, and by which I mean is entirely lacking in credibility and is entirely lacking in any backing whatsoever from any form of empirical science whatsoever, actually, Milton. But we'll get to that point, Rice. So, off you go. Uh, dealing with uh, plant-based nutrition and issues. Yeah, that's an oxymoron, plant-based nutrition. There is no place in human nutrition for plants, Milton. And um, I, I, just by way of transparency, should tell you guys, I, I, I'm definitely... Uh, a Christian, and I... Well, my understanding, actually, Milton, is that you're a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So, mm. Take a lot of my life's lessons uh, from the Bible, and I'm thinking of uh, when Jesus uh, met the woman at the well, and they sat down and had a, a talk, and when he was finally able to convince her that he was, in fact, the Messiah... Why would the Messiah need to convince anybody that he is, in fact, the Messiah? She went and brought everybody in the town back to meet him. And I think tonight you guys need to go home and drag everybody you know back to this conference. All right, so now you're the Messiah. I see. Right. Um, that would seem to be um, sacrilege to claim to be the Messiah or even draw a parallel between yourself and the Messiah, Milton. Um, that would seem to be a, bless, a blasphemy of the highest order, actually. I think you should go and wash your mouth out, frankly. I mean... Yes, let's all applaud that. Let's all applaud the idea that people should go and drag others into a theologist, um, basically cult religion, uh, based solely around miseducating people, misinforming people, lying to them about what is good for them health-wise and nutrition-wise. It's completely un unconscionable behavior. It's disgraceful. It's disgusting, Milton. You ought to be imprisoned um, and very, very ashamed of yourself. There is anything but um, a Christian ideal behind what you are doing here. 
pull a gun on him if you have to. Oh, well, that's even better. Well done, Milton. Good work. Yeah, okay. If you look at the lineup of speakers that they have, if you guys had to... I have had a close look up at the lineup of speakers that pro provide um, entertainment for people like me anyway and my followers. Uh, at the Hypocrites Association here, it will stun you. It's a comedy lineup extraordinaire. To pay for this, this would be five to ten thousand dollars. No, that's what you each should be fined for every person that attended, for every minute that you lied to them, Milton. But it's absolutely free. And I'm telling you, don't miss out on this blessing. Don't let your loved ones miss out on this blessing. So having said that, what am I going to talk to you guys about today? We don't, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, no, ah, uh, ah, uh, Milton. Although we can guess because it's the same thing every time you open your stupid mouth, you say the same stupid shit. Uh, for those that haven't come across Milton before, um, he's the bloke that's brought us such classics as we can't possibly be carnivores because we don't have sharp pointy teeth like this. And milk is racist, for examples. Uh, he'll also tell us a whole bunch of reductionist crap, basically about his ideas about anatomy and physiology and metabolic process and all of that. And he'll get it completely wrong, as usual. And it will be my pleasure to debunk and destroy his arguments within seconds without breaking a sweat, because I know exactly what they're all going to be without having watched this through as yet, because uh, they're always the same. Right, off you go, Milty. Uh... I am going to talk about the why of being plant-based. Yeah, well, there is no reason to be plant-based as a human being, Milton, because humans are not. We are obligate hypercarnivores biologically, and that is what we should do to optimize our health and our lifespan. That's what the science tells us. That's what the comparative anatomy and physiology tells us. That's what the anthropology tells us. That's what common sense tells us. Um, it's only a small band of crackpots like yourself who are running around telling people otherwise, Milton. Ah. Now, I, I, I am uh, uh, honored ah, ah. to say that it is an honor and a privilege to follow Brenda Davis because... Brenda Davis, registered dietitian. Mm. Mm. <laughs> no, no, not a good source of information, not a reliable scientist. Um, a theologian, just like yourself, Milton, uh, a propagandist with an agenda to push. Um, anyway. She does some, some of the most incredible, amazing, complete, and accessible uh, lectures on the uh, value and benefits of being plant-based. There are no values or benefits to human beings and being plant-based. We are not plant-based, biologically or in any other sense. We are carnivores. For our health. No. False. And over the course of these 10 days, there are going to be a lot of people who are going to talk to you about how being plant-based is better for you health-wise. They're going to lie to you is what they're going to do because there is no evidence whatsoever to support that claim extant anywhere in the literature. There is no science to underpin that ridiculous theologically based claim Milton Mills never has been never will be wise how it's better for the environment no it isn't that either demonstrably vastly more problematic and damaging to the environment to attempt to feed the human population with plants than with animals Milton clearly obviously patently this is not even up for debate this is very, very straightforward nonsense. But that still leaves the question of why. There is no why. You absolutely should not attempt to feed yourself with plants. That's not your design. Why is it that being plant-based is better for us? It isn't, Milton. Because I'm sure... Well, your surety about your ideas, Milton, doesn't make them correct. They're still not. That you, like me, when you were uh, in bah, school, bah. you were taught that human beings are omnivores. Yeah, I was taught that too, and that's wrong. 
We're not. We're nothing of the sort. We are obligate hypercarnivores. Fact. Unequivocal fact. Scientifically established fact. So we move on. Meaning that we are supposed to be eating a mixture of animal and plant. Yeah, that's false. We're not supposed to be doing that. And if that's true. It isn't. Then why is it that eliminating part of what we're supposed to be eating is better for us? Because actually the problem, Milton, is when you mix plants and animals together, what you are doing in effect is imposing a situation where you are consuming a diet which is rich in both carbohydrate materials and also in fatty materials. That will activate the Randall cycle to a large degree for a large proportion of your existence. That will lead to chronic systemic inflammation, obesogenesis, um, type 2 diabetes, tending towards type 1 diabetes, and a host of other autoimmune dysfunctions, many forms of cancer, heart disease, most forms of dementia, and almost every cause of early death other than accidents, Milton. Okay? It's the mixed macronutrient diet, which is the worst possible diet a human being can consume. So you need to remove one of fats or carbohydrates to have a healthy, robust um, lifestyle. And the way to do that is to, is to, as I say, is to remove one of those fats or carbohydrates the diet, which is rich in carbohydrates and poor in fats, while it alleviates the Randall cycle problem and thus is associated with improvements in health over a very short span, say three to five years, give or take, after that period of time in general, there is a catastrophic health failure precisely because that diet is absolutely destitute of nutrient required by human beings, but precisely because it is absolutely at odds with the diet that we have absolutely evolved to consume, Milton. So the one approach to nutrition that is remaining is the one that is rich in fats and animal proteins and extremely poor in carbohydrates, as close to zero as possible, in fact. As it turns out, that's how we've evolved, and that's our genetic gift. That's how our organ systems are designed, whether you like that or not, Milton. That's how our biological systems are tuned and 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 uh, supposed to work we're done here and we're three minutes and four seconds in and you've actually said nothing except ah uh, uh, and i'm a christian when actually mm. okay so well oh you've also suggested that we should pull a gun on people to get them to believe what we want them to believe okay because like humphrey bogart in Casablanca, we've been misinformed. Yes, you have been misinformed, Milton, badly about a number of issues. Let's pick on the dietary issue today, the nutrition issue, though, because that's what you're going to be talking about. Yes, you are badly, vastly, hugely misinformed, Milton. Uh, you've been sucked into the ideological belief that a diet consisting purely of plants is going to be healthy for you. Well, there are a number of things that go wrong for folks who eat such a diet, Milton. And one of those potential things that can go wrong for people who eat the wrong kind of diet in, in that way, Milton, is obesogenesis. Being overweight, Milton, is, is one of those things that can occur. Being clinically obese, Milton, is one of the things that can absolutely occur to people who are eating the absolutely wrong diet, Milton. Okay? Um, what's next? Uh, we are not omnivores. Yeah, you're right on that. We are not. We are, by design and physiology and even our psychology, strict plant eaters. And False, Milton. Absolutely, completely, utterly false. <coughs> Wrong. We are nothing of the sort. There is not one single scrap of evidence to support that ridiculous notion anywhere. And in fact, every so-called piece of, of evidence that you're going to bring to the table here, as I said in the introduction, I'm going to pull to bits in seconds without breaking a sweat, using nothing more, actually, than common sense and a vast knowledge of actual scientific methodology and discipline. It's all I need. Those are my two, my two tools. Common sense and a knowledge of science. Okay? Let's do it. And that's what I hope to prove to you today. Well, you're going to fail. 
So without further ado, good. let's go ahead and get started. And I'll start you off with a quote of mine. People have been so thoroughly brainwashed that they actually think eating pieces of dead, rotting corpses is somehow healthy. Okay, so here we have an emotionally charged sentence written by somebody who has been fooled to believe that eating plants is healthy, claiming that it's them who have been brainwashed, actually, and then referring to meat as dead, rotting corpses. Okay, well, once you remove the leaves from a plant and you're going to eat those, they are parts of a living being, and as such, are parts, therefore, of dead, rotting corpses, aren't they? And actually, meat is well and truly um, accepted by the human body. It's broken down by acid in the stomach very quickly to component parts assimilated into the body and used for the purposes of that body well before it gets any time to particularly rot. That's not true of plant material, which sits, sits in the human colon for way longer than food should sit in a human colon, because uh, plant material is not food for humans, and it sits there and it rots, frankly, Milton. Okay? So there's your first mistake. Not a single piece of even basic common sense here, just a moat of garbage. Okay, what's next? It's just crazy. Now, what's crazy, Milton, is you thinking that's evidence of anything. That's a ridiculous, emotional, vacuous statement made by someone who clearly has not the first semblance of common sense about his person anywhere. It's a corpse, ladies and gentlemen. So is a plant that's been removed from a tree. It's a body part, and it's rotting as soon as you do that. It may not be in a casket, but it's a corpse. Also, a picture of a rotten bird's corpse there. Humans don't run around eating rotten birds. Milton, I certainly don't. All the meat I eat is fresh. Okay. So, so why does that get applause for making a stupid, vacuous, emotive statement, totally divorced from reality in any way, and show an image of something that no human being in their right mind would, would remotely consider eating. Ridiculous. Again, title of the talk, Are Humans Designed to Eat Meat? Well, the answer is yes, yes we are. By four and one half million years of evolution, Milton. This is demonstrable, unequivocal, clear, and unambiguous. And your emotive claptrap will have no impact on that whatsoever. I started all my lectures off with a quote from God's Word. This so, quotes from people, including yourself, which is just rubbish, and then from a book written by a man, or a series of men, actually, claiming to be the Word of God when it's actually nothing of the sort, Milton. It's from the book of Genesis. He says, you shall eat the plants of the field. That's not God's Word. So why is this topic as important as important? I mean, also in the Bible, there are a number of references to instructions, so-called, from God to eat meat as well, Milton. So which is it? That, that if, if that book that you seem to put so much stock in was truly the word of God, it would tell you to be an omnivore, wouldn't it? Because it does tell you that. Okay? But it also tells you what the basis of your diet should be, and it's quite clearly, um, quite heavily leaning towards meat being the predominant factor and plants being minor. Actually, if you've read the thing thoroughly, that's, that's what you'll gain from it. Anyway, what's next, Milton? Because experts estimate that up to... Experts, okay, who? Milton, what experts are you referring to there? And who is it that's determined those people to be, in fact, expert? Nope. Experts estimate. Estimate? Well, that's, that's a guess. 
that's a so-called educated guess, but again, who's to say who's educated and who's not? There are people running around, Milton, who believe you to be educated, despite your ridiculous, pustulous, excremental nonsense. Your torrent of lies and uh, misrepresentations and pseudoscience. That's not education. Um, Sorry about that. Uh, 80% of the major diseases and premature death in this country could be prevented. See, could is a great word too because it leaves the other thing entirely on the table. Maybe not too. Could be prevented by making major changes in our diets and lifestyle. Well, yes, but that doesn't stipulate what changes, Milton, does it? So experts, whoever they are, estimate, guess, maybe 80% of the major diseases could be prevented by doing something different from what we mostly do, which is the omnivorous diet. Okay, what's next? 80% of the major disease and premature death that we see in Western countries every year could be prevented by making major changes in our diet and lifestyle. And again, just think about that for a moment. I, I have done actually over multiple decades as, among other things, Milton, a professor of human nutrition and physiology. I've thought about that a great deal. Have you? No, apparently not. Mm. <laughs> oh dear, dear, oh dear. Eighty percent. If I were to ask to sh for a show of hands, which I really can't see because the lights are in my eyes, but if I were to ask you to raise your hands, if you know of someone who's had a heart attack or had cancer or has diabetes or who has died from these diseases. Yes, we'd all put a hand up, of course. So, what's your point, Milton? Diseases. I'm willing to bet every single hand in this room would go up. Yes. So what? And I'm sure uh, many of you, like me, have lost loved ones before their time to these dreadful diseases. Well, if you think that 80% of those people or 80% of the suffering that they've endured could have been avoided, that is just a really sobering statistic. Sure, fine. What's that got to do with anything, Milton? Except you're now going to say the change that they should make is to not eat animals, which is false, Milton. That's the last thing a human being ought to do if they want the most robust health for the longest period of time possible. They should not do any such thing. What they should do is eliminate plants, Milton. And so we need to understand that, yes, being plant-based will help us. No, it won't, Milton. Not at all. False. Avoid these things, but we also need to understand why. And it's well, we're still waiting for anything from you, Milton. Ever, in fact, actually. We're still uh, waiting uh, for uh, uh, anything at all to come out of your ridiculous mouth ever that is even remotely correct, let alone based in common sense or actual application of scientific discipline in any way. Okay? Goodness me. It's also important to understand why, because it puts greater impetus and a, a greater moral underpinning on the need to change our diets. Now, yeah, we do, exactly. Yes, we do need to change our diets, Milton. We need to eliminate plant material from our diet. We've been told we need to change our diets for our health. Um, Brenda mentioned how important it is to save the earth. Lots of people. Well, she's wrong because trying to feed human beings with plants will not save the earth, will not mean that our impact on the environment is less. If anything, it will make it worse. Facts again. Sorry about that. People are talking to you about the... Uh, um, the, nah, 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 nah. the impact of animal-based agriculture on uh, climate... Nah, nah, nah. Yes, animal agriculture does have an impact on the environment, but it's much less than the impact on the environment, which occurs due to the cultivation of plants for food. Milton. Much, much less, in fact. So we move on, because those are the facts, and no amount of saying otherwise will change those facts. They are still the facts. Change and global warming. Oh, global warming, you say. Okay, good. It is the number one driver 
of climate change? No, false. Completely false. And global warming? Absolutely false. Fundamentally false. Notice the complete lack of reference to any materials that would establish that as a fact here uh, by Milton. So, wrong again. Which is why I tell people all the time, if you drive a Prius and still eat meat, you need more fiber in your diet. Nope. Nope. Not at all. If you understand what I'm saying. Um, and, uh, and so the question is, why is that true? It isn't true, Milton. It's false. Well, it's true because we are plant eaters, but... No, we're not, Milton, still. When you understand that we... See, this is a man using the word understand. I don't know how many times in the last few minutes. Understand, 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 he says. While at the same time, we know for a fact that this is the bloke who has said there is no possible way we can be carnivores because we don't have sharp pointy teeth like this. And milk is racist, though. Um, tell us all about understanding, though, Milton. And while you're there, perhaps you might, with your huge understanding, clearly, of human nutrition and human physiology, maybe you could explain to us the process of obesogenesis. Maybe. I don't know. Um, right. Off you go. Our plant eaters, then it means it is completely immoral for us to be killing animals. False. What's completely immoral, Milton Mills, is telling people that they should eat plants. That is totally immoral. What, what else is immoral? Uh, misrepresenting the science making statements about what science says when it says no such thing, lying to people about what the requirements are for human well-being, physically, emotionally, spiritually, nutritionally, or in any other sense. Those are all vastly immoral things. I'll tell you what else is immoral. It's immoral for any given individual who is clinically obese, whoever that might be, to stand up in front of a group of people and tell them all about how to be healthy. That is immoral, Milton Mills. Just for your interest. Should you ever come across anybody who might be clinically obese standing up in front of a group of people telling them how to be healthy? If you do ever come across such a person, Milton, I think you should give that person a few uppercuts or maybe point a gun at them uh, and tell them to stop it because it's immoral. Okay? Thanks. And destroying our planet. No, false. Meat eating is not destroying our planet whatsoever. When we shouldn't be doing that in the first place. No, that's false, Milton. Still, so, you know, absolutely nothing but opinions. Opinions and more opinions. None of them based on facts, science, common sense, or an understanding, actually, Milton, of anything whatsoever. You know, it's one thing if we're supposed to be doing it, but we say, you know what, that's causing problems. So I'm well, we are supposed to be doing it. It's our genetic gift, Milton. We've been eating meat for four and a half million years almost exclusively without any plant material to speak of whatsoever, except for about the last 10,000 years or so, actually. An absolute blink of the eye genetically. We certainly are not evolved back towards eating a significant amount of plant material in our diet. In fact, it's disastrous for our health. Just look at public health statistics, Milton, and you'll see what the problem is. It's very, very clear indeed. Very clear indeed, actually. Uh, but then that would require you to actually engage with the actual common sense and the actual data available on this topic, rather than to just mindlessly espouse your ridiculous theological belief structure to a group of people who, for some reason, seem to think you're a good, uh, a good advocate and a good example for people to follow. going to change because it's better for everybody. That's like, you know, let's say you're, you're, you're having a party and it's 11 o'clock at night and your neighbor comes over and says, hey, you're keeping me up. And you say, okay, well, you know what? 
It's my house. I have a right to have a party. But since it's disturbing you, I'm going to shut the music off. No, this is not it. This is a case where the city ordinance says no parties. <laughs> okay. So we should not be eating animals in the first place. Which well, okay, uh, great. We should not be eating animals in the first place, says this individual here. We shouldn't be eating animals. Okay. Means that killing, raising animals for human consumption and destroying the earth to do it. We're not, Milton. Is completely unjustifiable and immoral. So how are we going to figure that out? How do you figure out what... Uh, 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 a particular animal should be eating. Well, it's pretty simple, really, Milton. What you do, in the case of humans, anyway, is you ignore absolutely everything that you're going to find published in a so-called area of science, which is actually a ring-fenced area of anti-science, propaganda, spin doctory, smoke and mirrors, and theology, called human nutrition science, because it doesn't exist. And what you do is you look at things like comparative anatomy and physiology. I know that's something that you think yourself to know something about, Milton, but every time you say anything at all about this, you just make yourself look like an absolute buffoon if you didn't already thoroughly look like such. Um, we'll get to that, though, point-wise when you start doing that. So we look at comparative anatomy, which tells us clearly that human beings are fully adapted for meat-eating and associated fat eating and that's what we should do you look at our um our organ systems you look at our metabolic pathways you look at our integrated hormonal and endocrine functioning um, you look at the anthropology at all points absolutely clearly and unequivocally in the same direction milton then you apply the anecdotes of what happens when you feed a human being appropriately versus when you feed them inappropriately. Hey, Presto, I think we've got a pretty good idea um, of what a human being should eat. In the same way that nobody remotely sensible questions what the appropriate species-specific diet, for example, a cat or a dog is. I know there are some crackpots out there that suggest otherwise. They're the sort of people that should lose those animals, frankly. Uh, the, same, the same exact um, thing applies to parents, ah, Milton, who might be trying to feed their children in such a way as well. Those, those parents tend to lose those children, Milton. What does that tell you? It tells you that the authorities understand that a plant-based diet is not appropriate to feed a human being at all okay so those are the things that we apply to give us an understanding of what it is a human should eat all right what's next well first of all it's very clear that animals that are designed to eat stuff that looks like this yep those look a lot like foxglove plants, Milton. There is no animal that will do well eating those. Foxglove, if I'm correct in identifying that plant, Milton, and I think I am, is the plant from which the drug digitalis is derived. In its natural form, it comes from a toxin produced by the foxglove plant, which is so powerful that it will kill an animal stone dead, mostly. It will stop the heart. Okay? Wow. Clearly have different issues from animals that are designed to look, to eat things that... Okay, so by your logic, Milton, when you say there's no possible way we can be carnivores because we don't have sharp pointy teeth like this... Couldn't we also say there's no possible way that we could be herbivores, and the word is herb, Milton, with an H on the front, you might have noticed, herbivores, 
uh, then you know we can't possibly be one of those either because we don't have four legs, a little wet nose, and horns coming out of our head like this. So there we go. You're done. We can't be herbivores because we don't we don't look like that. And that's your logic, Milton, in a nutshell. You've got nothing else. Incredible. That look like these two antelope over here. Why? Because plants are anchored into the ground. They don't get up and run away. They also don't kick you or try to stab you with antlers. Um, and uh, they're generally rather docile. But docile? Try and accost one of these animals, Milton, and see how docile it is. Buffoon. They also tend to be spread out over a vast area. And depending on the climate patterns, they may be in season in one area, but... Does this buffoon have anything of any value to add to any discussion on this topic at all, ever? We are still waiting, Milton, for anything remotely sensible or of any utility whatsoever. Hello? But then as the rains move, they, be, they become available in a different area. So if you're designed to eat plants... You, but not foxgloves. You've got to cover a lot of territory to find the food you eat. Now, animals, on the other hand, they aren't anchored in the ground. They tend to react negatively when you bite them. <laughs> and so if you are a creature that is designed to eat other animals, you have to be capable of, number one, chasing them down. Yes, there is no animal on this planet that can avoid a human being who wants to catch it. We have the ability, either physically or using technology, to do just that. And we do so. We are the most effective predator on the planet, Milton, for that reason. We evolved in a specialist niche. We evolved with specialist tools. One of the most important tools we have as a human being, well, some of us, Milton, some of us, is the capacity to think using a large brain, Milton. Um, and that has allowed us to communicate with one another, to strategize, to work together, to share knowledge, and to develop technology which allows us the um, ability to take down, chase down, catch and eat any animal we should see fit to do so, Milton. Do you have any point to make? Nope. Catching them and then essentially killing them and dismember yes, human beings have been killing animals and eating them for well over two and a half, sorry, four and a half million years, Milton. Well, humans and our, and our predecessors who were very similar species, but not quite humans yet. Yes, we've been killing animals for a long, long time. Very, very successfully. Dismembering them. Yes, dismembering them as well. We've been doing that too. Without becoming injured yourself. Yes. Yes, we've been doing that effectively, clearly, for four and a half million years. How do I know that? Well, because we are still here, Milton. And disabled yourself. And so how do animals do that? Well, we see that... Car well, who cares how animals do that? This discussion is about what human beings do in order to feed themselves. This is about the strategies employed by human beings. We are an animal, but we are a specific animal. Let's talk about what humans do. We think, some of us, Milton, we communicate with each other. Milton, we have language. We have opposable thumbs. We have the dexterity manually to produce tools like, oh, sharp pointy sticks. We can work out that if you string the gut of an animal across one of those pointy sticks, we can then put another pointy stick between it and go, and fire sharp pointy sticks in a much more projectile fashion we can harness fire 
we can build machines. It's all pretty straightforward, Milton, if you actually have a look at reality, a thing from which you are clearly absolutely divorced, as evidenced by the fact that you would stand up in front of a group of people and profess to be able to help them with their health in any way. Take advice from who you will, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. It's your funeral. Literally. Carnivores are optimized for predation. They are optimized for chasing animals down, bringing... Yeah. And we've come up with a strategy that's very effective. We are the most successful predators on the planet, Milton. Fact. So we're not disqualified as carnivores yet. Obviously, because are we good at predating? You bet. Killing them down in an efficient fa fashion, killing them without becoming injured. Yes. We do that very effectively. So good. We are qualified as predators so, so far. What's next? Herbivores, on the other hand, are designed for foraging. The word is herbivores, not herbivores. And that's another ridiculous sweeping generalization. Does a panda bear sitting in a bamboo forest need to forage for bamboo? Nope. So there goes that ridiculous argument. Wrong again, Milton. Sorry about that, son, with the logic, once again, and the common sense, and the fact that every single ridiculous, nonsensical statement that's ever come out of your mouth can be dismissed in seconds without breaking a sweat. There you go. Panda bear sitting in a bamboo forest. We're done with that one. That is covering large amounts of territory. No, they don't. They sit in a very, very small home range to panda bears, Milton. Because bamboo's everywhere in the forests that they live in, in, in the natural environment, the bamboo forests. Okay? They don't have to go foraging for it or looking for it. It's right there. At a low energy cost. And why am I bringing up the topic of energy? You see, the title of this slide is Metrics. Feeding strategies. Yeah, but you need to apply some common sense, not just throw numbers at people, Milton. That's where you're falling over here. You're making sweeping generalizations as normal, which are demonstrably false within seconds. All I have to do is give one example of how what you're saying is wrong, and your argument is done. We're finished. Okay? You're a buffoon. All right? And you're completely and utterly divorced from reality. You're also one of the most severe sufferers of Dunning-Kruger syndrome I've ever seen, frankly. But that's for another day. And energy efficiency. Is this energy efficient way of getting our food together? Humans do that. My word, do we do that. Overly efficient these days. That's one of the reasons that we had uh, quite a bit of a problem with, with the overconsumption of various things that we shouldn't be consuming. Because it's so easy. Uh, we can go down to the supermarket without expending hardly any energy whatsoever, Milton. We can bop around in the supermarket at a very, very low intensity of expenditure, collect a vast amount of energy up, pay the nice checkout operator for it. Uh, please use operators. Don't use self-serve checkouts, people. For goodness sake, that's somebody's job. Um, yeah, and go home, and then we can fill ourselves up with a vast overplus of all sorts of nonsense. Very, very energy efficient. Fine. So good. Because all animals must procure their food in an energy efficient fashion. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why we've been so successful as a species over time, Milton, because we have worked out ways of being efficient about doing all sorts of things, like sharpen the end of a stick. That works. Don't need these anymore. I've never seen a single cave painting of a human being diving headlong at a woolly mammoth with its mouth open. The person with its mouth open, that is, not the mammoth. Okay? Doesn't happen. There were sharp pointy sticks and bows and arrows is what you see on the paintings, Milton. The other thing you won't see on a cave painting is a salad, son. Okay? What's next? That sounds obvious, but think about it. Why is that important? Because if you expend more energy acquiring the food that you eat, then you can... Some carnivores do that, those that have a strategy of doing that, like lions will do that, Milton, what you're saying there. Carnivores seek weak, diseased, or defective animals. Yeah. Yep, lions will do that. Humans, not so much. 
We can go and catch any of the animals we like, including the strongest and fittest, with ease. We have the technology to achieve it. That's one of the reasons we've, for example, been able to overfish the oceans so vastly and grossly in Milton. That's how we've been able to track down, hunt down, run down, for want of a better term, and kill some of the largest animals, some of the fittest and strongest animals on the planet. Whales, for example, Milton. Okay, it's very, very easy to understand if you actually apply more than about five seconds of thought process before you open your stupid, ridiculous mouth. Okay. Extract from that, in, from that food. It's almost like different animals have evolved in different specializations and different niches and have different techniques to achieve the survival and proliferation of that species. Humans have done that, and they've done that eating meat, Milton. How do I know that? Stable isotope testing. We'll get to that later, though, probably. It's unequivocal. It's hard science. It's a fact. That's what we've done for four and a half million years. Okay? Food, what happens to you? I, I heard mumbling, but I didn't hear an answer. I, oh, excuse me. Let, let me. Let me make it clear. This is an interactive uh, lecture. Is it? Because that's the first time you've tried to interact with your audience at all, Milton, and it's 10 minutes in. I expect audience responses when I ask a question, and if I don't get them, I'm going to start pointing out people, okay? So, so what happens if you expend more energy on the food that you can extract from the food once you get it? Well, you die. That's not a problem, though, for human beings, because Milton... We are here, isn't it? You have, right, you have an energy deficiency. In fact, some of us, Milton, clearly take in more energy than we expend. Don't they, Milton? Some of us. See, and you starve to death. So that That's not a problem for some of us, is it, Milton? Remotely. The other, the other extreme seems to be the problem for well, quite a few of us, Milton. Not me. I'm ideal. Body, uh, body composition. Okay. Some of us, Milton, are not ideal. Therefore, it seems that some of us might know something that others of us maybe don't know, Milton, perhaps. Who knows? That's not a viable strategy for survival. And for that reason, carnivores do not go out and look for the biggest, strongest animal on the savannah. Some of them don't. The ones that don't have brains. The ones that don't think, the ones that don't have a language, can't communicate with each other effectively and strategize, the ones that can't design machines and technology that allow them to do exactly that, Milton, like lions, but we're not lions. We're a different sort of carnivore from lions. We're, we're the kind that doesn't need sharp pointy teeth like this. Okay? Because that's the animal that's likely to kill them or to injure them so severely that they will not be able to hunt. Yeah, but this is a lecture about human nutrition, Milton, not lions. Okay? So instead, they look for weak, diseased, or animals that are defective in some way, that are stupid. Maybe they're wearing a MAGA hat. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. The stupid ones are the ones standing up in front of groups of individuals talking about health when maybe they have a very, very serious patent metabolic disorder going on, born of their vastly incorrect dietary approach. Perhaps, Milton, I, I don't know if there are people like that in the world. I think there might be. Who's to say? I don't know. Um... Maybe they're the ones that should be hunted down and eaten. I don't think I would, personally. But anyway, that's for another day. Because those animals are easier to catch. And therefore, they will expend less energy catching those animals than, and, uh, than they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they will be able to extract more energy from those animals than they had to expend catching them. Herbivores, by contrast... Herbivores? Do not want the plant food that is dried out, brown brittle, and essentially... Uh, uh... Is there any logic to this? Is there any point to what you're saying here, Milton? No? Again? Okay, that's what I thought. 
still waiting for anything remotely, even based on common sense. Falling apart. Why? Because there's no nutrient, nutritive value to those plants. Those plants have lost all of their nutri nutrition. So instead, I'm sorry? Uh, <laughs> um, termites uh, do survive. <laughs> oh, who remember that is in the audience. 20 points. <laughs> There's someone doing the exact sort of thing I do. You just all you need to do is give one example of how Milton is wrong and the argument falls flat on his face because he's making sweeping generalizations saying what is a carnivore, what is a herbivore, and deciding that they all have the same strategies. They don't, Milton. Termites, thank you. <laughs> Love it. I've on cellulose, but Termites are insects, and we are focusing on mammals. Oh, right. So now it's okay to delineate. In the same way that insects differ from mammals, Milton, you'll find that mammals differ from one another as well in terms of their strategies for survival and their nutritional requirements, Milton. You absolute buffhead. You've just eviscerated yourself again. Wow. Incredible. And now, I mean, now it's important because insects have completely different physiology. Just like lions do to human beings. Just like cats have different physiology from dogs. Just like duckbill platypuses have different physiology from whales. You absolute moron. Wow. Is it possible to genuinely be as stupid as this man seems to be? I, I doubt it. I think he's it's got to be a put on somehow. Wow. Different mammal. And mammals. So now mammals are an animal. They all have the same physiology and the same strategies, do they? Great. Great. Let's put a blue whale in the middle of the African savanna and see how well it does, shall we, Milton? Seems all mammals are the same. You ridiculous person. <laughs> um, and because of termites have a special... So now he's... Now he's Desperately, desperately scrabbling and digging and trying to get his way out of this hole that he's just put himself in. <laughs> bacteria that allow them to process. Um, uh, um, <laughs> uh, wood fiber. <laughs> and extract energy from that. But again, we don't have the physiology of termites. So no, and neither do we have the physiology of lions or duckbilled platypuses or blue whales. We have the physiology of human beings, and that physiology is one of the different forms of physiology that have evolved in parallel, but in a specific niche in human beings, and it's one of those carnivorous ones. Milty. Sorry about that. What's next? That doesn't, and, and no mammal has the physiology of a termite. That's right. But this is not about termites, is it? This is about humans. So we really can't look at termites as an example of what we should be eating. Well, then why would you look at lions as an example of what all carnivores should do? <laughs> oh my God. This man is incredible, by which I mean completely lacking in credibility. Isn't he, kids? Oh, wow. Leave me a comment under the video and let me know that I'm not mad here and that you get how ridiculous this is. Uh, and, and if you're a vagunarized fucktard, you can leave me a comment as well. Um, about something or other, and I'll probably delete it if it's stupid, because almost everything that comes out of your ridiculous um, side of the theological divide here is absolutely fucking ridiculous from start to finish. All right, what's next? Um, so, bah, bah. I beg your pardon? Uh, termites look for wood. I mean, they, they look for cellulose. But again, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He's not going to let him go, is he? <laughs> if you guys want to debate the, the you know, whys and wherefores of insects, 
We can do that after this lecture. Or, or how about we stick to human beings? Let's do that. This lecture is going to look at mammals because. Yeah, but humans are one of many, many different varieties of mammal. What is your point, Milton? You're trying to tell people how they should feed themselves. Ergo, your talk should focus entirely on human beings. Why on earth would it do anything other than that? Because we are a mammal, so let's... We're a human being. Let's focus on those. Stay within the housing of this lecture, because it's kind of silly to try and compare ourselves to insects. Or lions, or blue whales, or duck-billed platypi. So herbivores, by contrast, herbivores seek the most love. Oh, let's let's talk about herbivores generally again and get it wrong again. Right, herbivores, by contrast, seek the most lush, verdant, i.e., healthy and/or beautiful foliage. Okay, fine. Let's say that's true, except for the ones that don't, as we've just had pointed out embarrassingly, Milton. Fine. Who cares? So what? What is that, how, how does that impact on what human beings should eat? Lush, verdant, and newest, healthiest uh, foliage because it is foliage, not foliage. Fuck me. The most nutrient dense. Predation using, and this is key, I want you guys to think about this. I have done, Milton, over many decades. You clearly haven't over more than several minutes. Patient using an herbivore mentality. Herbivore. Mentality is environmentally destructive. What do I mean by that? So carnivores look for, you know, dead, dying, weak, diseased food. Humans don't do that, Milton. Humans find huge, robust, healthy animals like woolly mammoths. They work together using strategy communication, intelligence, and sharp pointy sticks, and rocks, and they use their shoulder, which is absolutely designed anatomically for throwing, to do just that, uh, and they take down the mammoth as a group, and then they share out the spoils. Okay? The herbivores look for the most fresh, lush... Yeah, you said that, and it was vacuous the first time. ...new verdant food. So if you have that mindset of a plant eater and you want the biggest, the best, the prettiest, the most lush, and you go out and you prey on a species and you start taking out the biggest, most beautiful, most robust animals in that species, what are you going to do to it? Well, humans have done that over and over again, haven't they, Milton? They've wiped out a number of species by predating them to, exist, to non-existence. There was a large land-based bird in my native New Zealand, Milton, up until about, oh, they, they believe it's about seven or eight hundred years ago, called the moa, which was the largest land bird in existence. Um, and the local Pacific peoples called the Māori, who lived here, ate them all, every one of them, for example. So? What's your point? That doesn't mean we're not carnivores. The fact that we ate a number of species out of existence would seem to point clearly to the fact that we, in fact, Milton, fucking are. We didn't kill them for fun. Fuck me. This man is so stupid. It's incredible. You're going to drive those animals to extinction. Yes, and we have done multiple times because you're removing the best genes from the gene pool. Yes, and we've done that multiple times with multiple species. Absolutely, yes. It's completely bass -acre. Yes. But nonetheless, so are many things human beings do, like standing up in front of people when you are clearly metabolically disordered. Should there be any human beings doing that anywhere in the world, Milton? I don't know. Maybe, for example, there might be someone who is absolutely ridiculously clinically obese standing up in front of people telling them they should eat plants, for example. That might be happening somewhere in the world. That's completely ass backwards too, isn't it, Milton? I'm here all week. Nonetheless, we are carnivores. Still, shall we move on?
The carnivores, on the other hand, are actually strengthening the gene pool because they're removing the defective gene. Yeah, except humans didn't strengthen anything, really, did they, on planet Earth? But that doesn't mean we're not carnivores. And this brings up what I call the beauty paradigm and species destruction. Species. <laughs> So, still laboring a point that had no leverage whatsoever. We are still carnivores, Milton. Survival in, in nature is, again, as we already discussed, fundamentally, a question of energy out versus energy in. You expend more energy than... Well, there's more to it than that, Milton. That's reductionism in its most extreme form possible, isn't it? That's ridiculous. There's much more to the survival of a species than energy in versus energy out. You can uh, get from your food, you die. And so all true predators, again, seek what can be thought of as ugly food. Now, you, all you're doing here is repeating the points that, that you've already attempted to make and that have already fallen completely flat on their ridiculous face, Milton. There is nothing new in what you're saying here. You've already said this. What's the repetition about? Is it the brain fog, son? that you can't even remember what you yourself said to several minutes ago. <laughs> they don't waste their time chasing healthy animals because they're not likely to catch those animals, or if they do... Hey, you've said all of this and it was wrong the first time. They're likely to be injured by them, and that means that they won't be able to hunt. Unless, of course, they're not, because we're still here, aren't we, Milton? So they look for sick, diseased... Except we didn't do that, did we, Milton? And we are still here. And the anthropological evidence on what human beings have consumed for the vast majority of our existence on this planet is still clear and also unambivalent at all. There is no ambivalaciousnessness. Human beings have consumed almost nothing but the flesh and fat of large ruminant animals for four and a half million fucking years. Fact. Those are the genes selected for. Fact. That is how our organ systems are designed, Milton. Fact. That is how our metabolic pathways are designed, Milton. Fact. That is how our endocrine systems are designed. Fact. Sharp pointy teeth, though. Okay. Or a uh, very young bah, bah, bah. Animals, animals that are lame, um, and uh, or something that is already dead. Nah, nah, nah. dead. And that means that they're weeding out the less fit genes, they're strengthening the gene pools. By contrast... Again, yeah, you've said all of this already. And the plant eaters look for the most lush, the most beautiful food, because it is the most nutritious. And when we, because of our herbivore mindset... Herbivore, and we don't have a herbivore mindset, Milton. Not at all. How many species of herbivores run around waging wars against one another? For example. That remove the best genes from animal species. We do what we have done historically. We drive. Yes, yes, yes. You've said all of this and it was nonsense the first time. Can we move on? Have you actually got any point to make here? Five animal species to extinction. Now, now, and you contrast that with when you eat the, the healthiest and most lush plants, you swallow their seeds, you walk a couple miles down the road. Fill yourself up with the oxalate and poisons and so doing, of course, because the plants don't want you to do that. Road, you take a poop and you deposit those seeds with some fertilizer and you help spread those plants. Around. Unless you've chewed those seeds up, in which case you're going to be full of the toxins in those seeds because those seeds don't want you to chew them up. The environment. It's a beautiful system when it works the way it's supposed to. So let's look at some... Yeah, the human physiology is brilliant when it works the way it's supposed to as well, Milton. There are examples of people in the world, Milton, where their physiology is clearly, absolutely, patently not working the way it should. Maybe in cases where people who patently clearly do have metabolic dysfunction, Milton, wherever they might be in the world, maybe they should think about whether or not their diet is a contributing factor to their clear health failure, and therefore the absolute destitution and failure of their ridiculous fucking ideology. 
that they are still trying to push on others despite its absolute abject, clear and patent failure. Hmm. Carnival. Some carnivores have a streamlined torpedo shape. Others do not, Milton. Have you noticed that all sorts of different carnivores have all sorts of different shapes? It's because we're all individual animals and we've all evolved in parallel with all the other animals on this planet, sure, uh, but in a specific niche. And the niche that human beings have evolved in as carnivores, Milton, whether you like that or not, has not required us to have a streamlined or torpedo shape. Although, our basic body plan, four limbs, one head, guts in the middle. It's pretty similar to a wolf, isn't it? Despite the fact that we don't have sharp pointy teeth like this. Well, the first thing you notice is that they have a very uh, streamlined shape. Yeah, some of them do, some of them don't, Milton. So, you know, <laughs> wrong again. Uh, they're kind of shaped like a torpedo so that when they're run, they present the smallest cross-section cross of their body to the wind so that when they're running, they don't encounter a lot of wind resistance and that helps them run very fast. Or perhaps they develop large brains, communication ability, have skill with their hands and can build machines that can be torpedo shaped, that can move them at pace vastly exceeding the pace at which any animal can move and thus to be able to run down and corral and kill any number of animals we want to. That's another strategy that an, an animal might potentially develop. Oh yes, fuck me, we did. Okay, good. Fast. They have what I refer to as an armored front. And what I mean is you see the uh, chest cavity is number one in close. So more sweeping generalizations about animals other than human beings that have nothing to do with the strategy human beings use to gain their nutrition, feed themselves and to, to Continue our lineage. Good. All right. My ribs. There's a, a breastbone right here, and then yeah, we, we've got one of those too, Milton. Got heavily padded uh, neck and shoulder. You know, some of us, Milton, have more padding than others, don't we, Milton? Around our neck, for example, and stuff. Yep. Sure. So there's even, you know, quite a bit of uh, inter individual variability even within our species. Uh, however, if you look at our species, it's in general a very different shape from, from wolves, and, and that's because we're not wolves. In the same way that we're not fucking termites, <laughs> Milton, isn't it? <laughs> you ridiculous clown. Holders that when they run, uh, so that if they run up behind an animal and that animal tries to kick them, is going to hit them in an area where... Or you stand back and throw a sharp pointy stick or a rock or shout loudly or work together to scare or corral the animal over a cliff or something like that. You don't get anywhere near the animal so that it can kick you. Or, in, in more recent times, we have even better technology than that. We can take an animal down from thousands of yards away, can't we, Milton? There you go. Yeah, you hit it. Bang. Or even further than that, if you think about the ability of our technology, we could send drones out on the other side of the planet to take down any number of animals. Of course, we would then take us some time to get there to enjoy those, but we could do that, couldn't we? Because we have satellites around this not flat Earth that we have built in that we can send messages around. <laughs> Fuck me. Really? We're not carnivores because we're not a wolf. Okay. Well, if we're, if we're, if the termites analogy thing is valid, then so is the one about wolves, because we're not wolves, are we, Milton? Any more than we're fucking termites, okay? What's next? They are protected. The vulnerable parts of this animal, in other words, the unprotected abdomen and the gonads, are all the way at the other end, where they're least likely to be injured. You'll find the guts are in the middle, Milton. So you're, even your anatomy on, on that's not so good. But that's also not relevant to what, what human beings do. They have thick, muscular, sturdy neck, uh, forward-deployed weapons, and if you've ever looked into the face of a snarling dog, you know exactly what I mean. 
Um, and that uh, helps them. Uh, Fuck, this is ridiculous, isn't it, kids? Absolutely fucking stunningly ridiculous. All Milton is establishing here is that we are not wolves, and we know that. It doesn't mean we're not carnivores. We still fucking are, Milton. Attack their prey, bring it down. Their top speed for most uh, predators nah, 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 nah. is about 35 to 40 miles an hour. Why is that important? That's important because it enables them to capture sick or injured or unwary animals. Yeah, and because they can't communicate effectively using a language and they don't have higher thought process and they can't fashion sharp pointy sticks and stones, they can't harness fire, they can't harness chemistry, they can't design gunpowder, they can't build machines to chase down any animal, they have to do it themselves. They have to take down animals by diving at them headlong with their open mouths. We never did that in Milton. Go and look at the fucking cave painting, son. For fuck's sake. What's next? But it is not fast enough for them to chase down the healthiest animals. Because the healthiest animals typically can outrun them and uh, uh, outrun nah, them. Nah, 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 nah. Ask them in an uh, endurance race. They have what is called a digitigrade stance. What does that mean? That means that they are permanently on their toes. Their skeletons are constructed so that they're always on their toes. Now, Except humans are not constructed that way because there was no evolutionary pressure to make that necessary. None at all. What's your fucking point besides none as usual? You think about the Olympics when, um, when uh, human runners, runners get ready runters, to, yeah. to, to run. What is the, to runt, yeah. the uh, announcer says? He says, runners, on your mark, get set. When he says get set, that's when they get up on their toes. What is your fucking point? For fuck's sake. And I know I've mentioned it, but... <sighs> Fuck, really? Tell us all about health, Milton. Right? To get ready to run. Well, these animals aren't to do that. They're always on their toes, and I'll show you that in a minute. The vagoons, the vegetards, the supplicants in the Church of Anorexia Vegana genuinely think Milton Mills is a highly educated, intelligent human being, boys and girls. They really think this guy is the shit. They think he's clever. Oh, this, you, you look at the commentary in their echo chamber comments underneath this video, and everyone's talking about how brilliant it is and how insightful it is and how clever it is. Do we have a divergence even within our own species? Are we going to diverge into two clear species, one intelligent species and, and, and the other one? Who knows? I wonder if the one that's getting the nutrition they require from the source that they require to get it from is the one that's likely to come out on top at all. And that increases their leg length, which increases their stride length, which helps to increase their speed. Their nails are sharp claws, which act like sprinter spikes, helps them uh, run faster. It also helps them grapple with prey once they jump to it. They have permanently flexed joints. Again, when we want to try to run, we've got to get down in a runner's crotch so that we can kind of develop that burst of speed. These animals have permanently flexed joints, so they don't have to get down in a runner's crouch. They're permanently in a runner's crouch. And again, show you that in a minute. But that means that they have to use muscle energy to resist gravity. So right now, we are going to do a little exercise. I need everyone in the room, unless you have a disability, to stand up right where you are. Just stand up. Okay. Is anybody having any difficulty standing right now? No. Are well, it seemed like some of them took quite a while to achieve it, Milton, probably because of their vast destitution of nutrition. And by the looks of many of them, a metabolic dysfunction of some kind, perhaps, Milton. Um, yeah, that really did seem to be a very laboured um, exercise. But also, what's your point, son? None of this impacts the reality of the situation that human beings absolutely are carnivores. At all. All right. Now, I want everybody 
to crouch down like this and stay in this position as long as you can. What is your point here? We are not wolves any more than we are fucking termites. Milton. Like we're getting ready to run, but we ain't going nowhere. Now, who is starting to feel that burn in their thighs? You starting to feel that? Why are you feeling that? Because human beings don't behave the way you are currently asking these people to behave, Milton, typically. It is not something they are accustomed to. The skeletal structure of a human is not designed that way, but that has no impact on what the correct nutrition for a human being is. At all. None. It's because your muscles are now resisting gravity instead of your skeleton. All right, you guys can have a seat. But that's why your pets, like your dogs and your cats, if they're not actively doing something, they go lay down because it takes energy for them to stand. Because of these permanently flexed joints, they are not able to use their skeletons to resist gravity. All you're doing is pointing out the differences between certain different animals, Milton. None of this has any influence over the facts about what correct nutrition for a human being is. None. And they have, as you can see, these skinny little legs, which lightens, and these tiny feet, which lightens the cost of running and helps them run faster. Um, their senses are optimized for detecting prey, so they have super cute hearing. Their ears move around like little radar dishes to help them localize their prey. Their eyesight, they may have binocular vision, but their eyes are constructed very, very differently from ours. Their eyes are optimized for seeing at night. They are also optimized for detecting movement, not seeing fine detail. They have very low resolution. Their sense of smell can be up to 100,000 times more powerful than ours. It's sensitive enough to detect and track prey at great distance. Right, so wolves are different from human beings. Okay, great. Well, fuck me. Really? Are they? <laughs> but this is the really important part. Because for years, people thought that when uh, carnivores went out to hunt, they were just randomly hunting animals, kind of like we do. We go out, uh, well, excuse me, some of us, those who are still not evolved enough to know that hunting is disgusting. Um, and you really are an absolute buffoon, Milton Mills. You really have nothing whatsoever of any value to offer to this discussion purely because you are divorced from reality, you are destitute of the first clue of what you're ah, 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 talking about, you are absolutely patently unable to apply even basic common sense, let alone actual logical progression, to any of your arguments whatsoever, you are an absolute joke. A complete joke. What's next? And they go out and they just look for something to shoot. No, these animals actually can smell which animals are sick. And we are now using this ability of these animals to actually detect cancer recurrences. So fucking what? In people uh, who've had colon cancer or melanoma, we uh, train. So fucking what? In companion animals to be able to detect when someone's about to have a seizure. Examples of human beings using tools. Again, see how that makes us different from the other animals, Milton? See how that means we're not termites or wolves? In fact, we're using the descendants of wolves as companion animals and as seeing eye animals and as sniffing bum cancer animals. See how that makes us not wolves and therefore comparing us with wolves doesn't establish that we are not carnivores. We fucking still are. Or when their blood sugar level is low, because that's how powerful these animals' sense of smell is. And so that means that, again, when they're out hunting,
they are sniffing the air to find out which one of those animals is sick. Why are they doing that? Because they don't have the abilities that we have to take down any fucking animal we want to. That's why. They are a different animal. They've evolved in a different niche to what we have, Milton. Okay? It's easier to catch, exactly! Yeah, but we don't need to make it easier in that way. We have other strategies, so still no point. Less energy out, more energy in. Exactly. Now, this is what I was telling you. You see? These permanently flexed joints. Oh my god, really? You still want to bang on about this. It still has no bearing on this discussion. Whatsoever. That's his carnivore skeleton at the top of the... It's not a carnivore skeleton. That is a canine skeleton. You'll find another different sort of carnivore skeleton, Homo sapiens skeleton. It looks very different, but it's still a carnivore skeleton. Fuck me, this is ridiculous. Joints, and you see they're on the tips of their toes. Their heel is actually a third of the way up their leg. Very different uh, construction from uh, humans and herbivores. Yes. But that doesn't make humans herbivores. We are not. Still. Now let's look at what I call the vulnerable herb. That looks even less like a human than a fucking dog does, doesn't it? There goes your fucking theory. Jesus. Herbivores, and these are the ones that are uh, hunted by uh, carnivores. Well, clearly they're designed for foraging and can walk long distances at low energy costs because they have very straight legs and their skeletons actually help them stand. They tend to remain active throughout the day as opposed to night. They live in large multifamily family social groups. Their limbs, as I said, are straight, so their bones resist gravity with a, minimal, um, a minimum of muscle uh, energy. Some of them are so... Do you have anything whatsoever to say to prove that human beings ought to eat plants, Milton. Still, no. Well constructed for standing, that they can actually sleep standing up, because with four legs, they're like a table. Um, and the, whereas the carnivores' limbs were skinny, their limbs are even skinnier. What's, what's the, the most fucking insulting thing about all of this, Milton? Is that you genuinely believe that anybody with a modicum of actual intelligence would take what you have to say here as being of any value? It's fucking insulting. And if you weren't so clearly patently challenged yourself, if you weren't so obviously mentioned, I would take that as an insult. I just feel sorry for you because you are so fucking sh clearly. You really genuinely believe you have a point here. Stunning. And lighter, which means that that enables them to run even faster than the carnivore. But it gets better. They have what's called an ungular gray. And that's why I meant they're called ungulates. They have... Oh, for God's sake. Really, Milton? Can we... Can we start to talk about human physiology at any point here? At any point, are you going to talk about human physiology and how that relates to what it is we should feed ourselves? Have an angular grade stance. That means that they are on point like a ballerina. Instead of standing on the balls of their toes, they are literally standing on the tips of their toes. Furthermore, many of them have lost many of their toes, which is why they will have cloven hooves like two toes, or in the, uh, some, some of them have three toes like rhinos and tapirs. And then in the case of horses and other equine, equines, they've gotten down to just one toe. And this, again, allows them not only to run faster, but also gives them greater endurance. 
You notice that when uh, Western civilization needed to hitch their wagons and stagecoaches to animals, they didn't use lions, tigers, and bears. They used horses and oxen. Uh, their nails, instead of being sharp claws, are flat and blunt. They may have color vision because color vision helps them detect when their food is ripe and can be eaten. They are diurnal, meaning uh, active during the day. And so all sorts of different animals have all sorts of different survival strategies and have evolved all sorts of different attributes because of their particular pathway through their evolutionary niche. Okay, Milton, great. So fucking what? So what? Their top speed is typically about 45 to 50 miles an hour, meaning that if they're healthy, they can typically outrun and outlast a predator. Then, so fucking what? Not humans. They can't avoid and outrun humans. No. Then we reach what are called the invulnerable herbivores. These are the ones that are so invulnerable. Are they? I think you'll find enough shots of a large enough caliber will take down an, ele an elephant. Milton, they're not invulnerable. Humans used to take down much bigger elephant-like creatures called mammoths and mastodons. They're not invulnerable, Milton. Fucking hell. So large and powerful, they're essentially immune to predation. Except they're fucking not, are they? Do you see any mastodons running around the place at the moment, Milton? Or woolly mammoths? Do you see any of those? And what you see there is that they don't have to run that fast. They're top speed. They can't. They're too big for that. Their body structures don't support that. It's almost as if they have their own niche as well. It's almost as if that's yet another example of the fact that animals differ from one another, Milton. So this style of herbivory from elephants is quite different from the kind that you'll find in those springbocky type animals you showed in the slide before. Does that mean one of these is not an herbivore? Because they're different? No! Fuck! It's usually only about 25 to 30 miles an hour. Again, they are daytime foragers, but they have these really thick, heavy, straight, uh, pillar-like limbs. Jesus they Christ. have a largely hairless skin. Their nails are also flat and blunt. They have large, heavy feet, and so because they don't have to move their feet very fast, and may have a flat uh, foot or plantigrade-like stance. And like humans, elephants are long-lived social mammals that live in large family groups of various sizes. And in general, terrestrial herbivorous mammals live much longer than the carnivore. So? These mammals are a living testament to the adequacy of plant protein. They eat nothing but... For those animals that have evolved eating those things. We fucking haven't done that, Milton. Plants, but they're the biggest things on land on the planet clearly there's plenty of so they've evolved their size precisely to make them not invulnerable milton less vulnerable to predation until people came along who had a different strategy again that the animals hadn't thought of oh the sharp pointy sticks and rocks and the communicating and using strategy and shit. A protein in plants. So this is just a uh, drawing showing a cat skeleton drawn to scale to compare with an elephant's and you see the differences immediately. So elephants are different from cats. Well, fuck me, are they, Milton? Okay, good. The cat has the flex joints. The elephant has the straight joints meaning that when it's standing, it's... Yes, yes, yes. Cats are different from elephants. We know. We get that. This uh, skeleton is resisting gravity as opposed to its muscle. Now, let's talk about the energy cost of locomotion. For all animals, if you grab... Why, Milton? Why would we talk about this? How does it impact or have any fucking influence at all on what the physiology of human beings are and how we should eat?
We are neither elephants nor fucking cats, nor duckbill platypuses, nor fucking termites, nor whales, nor any fucking thing else. We are a human being. We have our own strategy. We have evolved that way. We are carnivores. Whether you like that or not, Milton, what the fuck is next? After walking speed versus the energy utilized, you see that you get a straight line, meaning the faster the animal walks, the more energy it requires. That's different only for human beings. Yeah, humans are, are unique in many ways, Milton. This is one of them. There are many other ways in which human beings are unique, like our ability to make a significantly um, complex language, to build tools, to have technology, to fly men in spacesuits to the moon and back. Okay, We're, we are unique in the animal kingdom, yes. For humans, you get a parabola. You see, you get this curve here. And, yes, we can see. And what that means is you get this energy savings that we mean, and this means that we use less energy for over a wide range of walking speeds so, human beings moved around the planet on their feet quite a lot. We walked long distances, Milton. So? Then would be predicted for an animal our size. How do we do that? Is it magic? Oh my god. Fucking seriously. It has to do with the way we stand and how our bodies are constructed. So, again, for all other animals, their center of mass oh, is actually God. located down between their uh, a base of support. And that means that even when they're walking, their center of mass stays within their base of support and they remain very stable. It's not true for human beings. Our center of mass is actually located on top of our base support, is up here. And that means that every time our legs swing out, your center of mass actually falls outside of your body. And you start to fall. So? And that means that as you're falling, instead of you generating energy to move forward, gravity is moving you forward. So? Is that clear to people? Yes, but so? So, because of the way we stand. The way we stand, you say, Milton. Let's have a look at uh, Milton standing, shall we, for a few minutes to appreciate the full situation here. Okay, this is an hour and a half long already. We are 27 minutes into a video that purports to be about why humans should eat plants. He hasn't got anywhere near it. I'm fed up to the back fucking teeth of this, frankly, boring nonsense. I think I've more than adequately shown how utterly vacuous this pathetic turd of a man is in terms of his ability to engage with common sense, reality, logic, science, or anything of any value, in terms of his statements about what it is that means that we should eat plants, he's provided absolutely nothing whatever, and I suspect he'll continue to do exactly that for the next hour of his video. Just stunning. Just un believable. Boys and girls, thank you very much for your patience to sit through as much of this as you have so far already. My patience has run out. I'm done. This is fucking ridiculous. This is the most stupid nonsense I've seen in a very, very long time. Anyone stupid enough to be sucked in by this ridiculous garbage and think it's ever so clever deserves exactly what they get. And what you're going to get if you follow Milton Mills in terms of his nutrition advice you're likely to get what he's got from doing the same thing.
if that's what you want. Follow Milty. Bah, 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 Mills. If, however, you want something different in your life, stick around my Fine Fine Actually Science Based channel and you'll learn why it is that there's absolutely no question about what human beings should feed themselves. Okay? And it's not plants, Milton. All right. Thanks for that. See you next time when someone else will be wrong on the interwebs, but not as wrong as this clown because there isn't one. All right. See you then. Ciao for now.